Here's over to the SMU women. Toya Wilson in her third season for the Mustangs. They finished as the number five seed in the American last year, going seven and eight in conference play, 17 and 13 overall. This year, they're picked preseason number four. It will be their last and final season in the American Conference as they move on to the ACC in 2024. And right now, we bring in Coach Wilson to the set. Coach, great to have you here with us today. You have some returners mixed with some great women you also got in the portal. What excites you most about this group that you have? I really think the uh, unknown. Um, <laughs> our girls are very talented, but we're very young, and I'm really excited to see how they gel with the veterans, um, the transfers, and the freshmen. Uh, as in your third year, I have you as a team to watch because the first year, you know, it's kind of a COVID season, didn't really play a whole lot of games. Last year, you get to the fourth, right? And so now I think the expectations are there as well, but you have that foundation from Baylor, from Michigan, some incredible programs. How are you seeing in year three, your program and your goals start to take shape? Well, we have a standard now, and, um, and it's an expectation. And every day we come to practice with that standard, with that expectation, with the goals that we set forth. Um, because we always say the only people that are going to believe are the people in our circle um, and believe in what we want to accomplish in our last year in the AAC. It's so exciting, too, because I think about how much your identity is based on defense. <laughs> so as the Manhattan College <laughs> Defensive Player of the Year, uh, how, how much pride do you take in the defense every day? And, like, what is your motto? When we see SMU, what, what are we going to know defensively about the Mustangs? We want to disrupt. Yeah. Um, that's the main thing. You, you should see us in practice. We do the defensive shell. We do different things out of shell, disadvantage drills, rebounding drills. Um, we focus a lot on defense because the de defense creates your offense. And with us being a little more guard-oriented this year, um, we want to really get out and, and intimidate um, and, and get steals and get deflections and get out in the open floor. So I'm just really big on defense. The girls know. I mean, I think defense is harder than offense because you have to learn new terminology. You have to learn um, new ways and new rotations. Um, I go to practices all the time, high school practices, and it's a whole different way we rotate than they do. And so you kind of un unlearn things to learn the new things. So I really think, um, you know, defense is your foundation. And so I'm really excited that they're bought in, um, they're buying in, they have energy when they're playing defense because defense is hard. And um, our girls are, are loving it. So you mentioned you mentioned two things there. There's the sophistication in the detail, right? There's a lot you have to teach. There's a lot that needs to be communicated. But then there's that last piece of that buy-in. Yes. Is that the hardest piece, or, or is that part of the recruiting process, knowing what they're getting into? Well, yeah, we, we're honest with them. We tell them, you know, um, you got to be able to play defense to be able to play for us. Yeah. And um, I think the girls buying in, and when they see it come to fruition, yes. and when they see you get a, a, a charge off a, of a help the helper, or they see you get a two pass reversal and get a steal in the passing lane when they see it happens it's like okay now they might know what they're talking about you know and so they love defense though we chart everything in practice so there's an investment in it yeah. and um, when you're invested in something that means you're committed to it because it goes back to like what you celebrate right yeah. like so i'm sure if you could take me into practice <laughs> there are things that you celebrate that someone on the outside might not get right whether it's you know keeping the ball on one side you know forcing a reversal forcing a reset defensively which allows you to just get set like, what are the things that you celebrate that becomes a piece of your identity? Well, I just really think, um, I can't tell you too much, you know, you don't know who's watching, but you, <laughs> no, but we, we do have things that our goals are for in the half court defense. And um, you just have to know when we're doing and what we're doing. If it's a ball screen, screen coverage, if it's a personnel coverage, you have to really think the game, not just play the game. And a lot of the kids yes. can just play the game. But when you have to think the game, it's really something different. So um, all the things you've said, we have days that we're focusing on those, keeping the ball to the side. If a team skips it, that's a win for us. Yes. Um, so a lot of the things, keeping the ball out the middle, um, are important to us. So, yeah. Coach, you go out and get Tierra Young in the portal from Houston. And when you think Houston women's basketball, you think of that suffocating yeah. defense and that press. What are you most excited about now to have her on your team instead of having to play against her? Well, we wanted her on the team to be a bucket. So uh, the opposite of what <laughs> they did this that past season, last couple of years. But she's just a great kid. Um, we're really excited for her to be closer to home. She's from Louisiana. And um, she's just been a pleasure to say, okay, we know what we're going to get with her. She was a sixth player of the 
year. We know she can score the ball. So now she's coming a little closer to home. And expect, expectations are you should be a leader. Um, you know what it takes. Um, and now we need you to have the ball in your hands a little bit more to add to who we have on the floor already. Speaking of leadership to lose, uh, Jasmine, Savannah Wilkinson, I mean, those two key leaders for you a season ago, who has really stepped up to fill those voids and gaps? Um, it's, it's been a couple people, you know, obviously Shantae Embry's coming back um, off her great season, but Tamia Jones leading the wings over there with Ella Brown and Reagan Bradley, um, but also Amir Abdul-Rahim, who transferred from Notre Dame, who hasn't really played yet. She had torn her ACL, and so I'm really excited about her growth um, and, and how she's going to be an effective inside post player. Um, but I really think with this team, the, the scoring is going to come from a little bit from everybody, and everyone's going to play their role. We have a couple transfers without, which is also with T. Young, Maya Chandler, who we needed a shooter, a pure shooter from Loyola Chicago. And, you know, you can't leave her open. She can shoot the ball. And I'm really, so I'm just really excited about everybody. I'm glad you brought up Reagan Bradley because I was looking at some of her stats and, and she was top 10 in the AAC for assists. But her, her positive negative ratio, I mean, she's constantly contributing and doesn't turn the ball over that much. So for somebody who's not averaging 20 points a game, but you're like, she's valuable. <laughs> Tell us why. Well, because Reagan can score the ball. She can do a little bit of everything um, at th all three levels. We just need her to be more consistent. And um, our expectations are to tell her, like, when you're open, score the ball. Look for yourself first before you're looking to pass. But she can do a little bit of both. And, um, you know, we were watching some highlights of her last, uh, this just a couple weeks ago. And I just, I want that Reagan Bradley, the one that can come and score and know what we're going to get with her consistently game in and game out. Going back to what you've discussed about how you teach defense, the emphasis on defense, how does that competition and practice make you better offensively? Well, we chart, to, yeah, right? we chart everything. So red versus blue. Yeah. And um, we have player of the weeks. Um, we have winners of the day. And I think when you have the kids competing without and getting better, getting better when they compete yeah. instead of just doing a drill. So we'll have transition drills. We'll have shooting drills. And we chart everything from tips, deflections, defensive rebounds, steals, turnovers in a negative way. So you're really thinking in practice. So now in the game, you already know how to play the game and know that everything's important. They're developing instincts. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Looking at what Coach Mulkey did last year, um, having a chance to see them in the SEC championship and then into the, the NCAA tournament, it was like they got it together. Mm -hmm. I know you've spent a lot of time, obviously, under Kim Mulkey's leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, how, does, how does she control timeouts to you? <laughs> um, whenever she wants them, she takes them. Um, but she demands uh, the attention and, and precise um, attention to detail and so that's why I think you know what I took from her is every every day in practice attention to detail from our coaches making sure our girls are touching the line to not ha not having a ball bounce when it's not supposed to bounce not overpassing I think attention to detail um, is very very important because in a game you know if you don't if you don't pay attention to the little things in practice, then that's going to slip in a, in a tight game, in a tight timeout. Um, so everyone has to be locked in. So the lock-in is important. Was that attention to detail a, a, a challenge in that COVID year, right? Because accountability was a challenge. Everything yes. was different, right? Like forcing kids. Part of making us go to class mm -hmm. was a part of our accountability. <laughs> yeah. And when we didn't have to do that, we suffered on the basketball court. So are you seeing just complete strides in the right direction because of the like the accountability you have in for a normal season. For sure, for sure. You know, I was at Michigan when we were in the COVID year. And, um, oh, you guys got at hit that bad. time, Yeah, and that time, you know, we had Zoom meetings and things yeah. like that and had the bubble, you know, in San Antonio. So I really think, though, it, it does show these girls are kind of getting out of it and re really relishing and liking what we're doing right yeah. now. It's the first time having this in person in a couple of years. That's wild. That's wild. Yeah. Coach Wilson, we really appreciate you spending some time with us today and looking forward to seeing what you all do here this season. Thank Thanks you so guys much. so much. Pony up. All right, you just heard from Toya Wilson, the head coach from the SMU Mustangs on the women's side. But coming up, we're going to hear from head coach Rob Lanier in his second season for the men. They were picked preseason number seven. Last year, they ended up finishing 10th in the conference. They went 5-3, and 13th, excuse me, 5-13 and 13 in conference play and 10-22 and overall. And they bring back 10 players from last year's roster. And now we're joined by the head coach, Rob Lanier. Coach, how do all these players, plus the couple of new additions you bring in, really fit into the style you're looking to create here at SMU? Yeah, that's well put. Um, I, I do feel like it's a true year two and that uh, we've got a lot of culture carryover 
with the 10 guys that came back that uh, have really, you know, through a lot of the disappointments that we experienced, we, we stayed connected throughout last year. And, and, and that energy into the summer with the addition of the new guys, you could actually see the returnees teaching and communicating uh, our way of doing things to the new guys. And then the new guys brought a lot of energy and talent and, uh, and some experience of their own. So it's, uh, it's been a good mix. Zurich Phelps is one of those guys that, to me, you just watch him, even just watch him in the shoot-around or practice. He seems like a really high-ceiling guy. Finding that consistency is one of the challenges, maybe being more of a playmaker. Where do you see he needs to take the biggest stride this year? I got him a book uh, three weeks ago. Um, I sent him a little IG video, and it was a young gentleman who's some celebrity. I didn't know who he was, but he was talking about a mentor of his who was schooling him on the, this concept of emotional intelligence. Yeah. Something that I've talked to the team yeah. about. But the video itself resonated with him because he knew who the guy was. Yeah. I didn't. And he said, I got to get that book. And I got it for him. And he says he's been reading it. But uh, to answer your question, that's, that's yeah. the area. You know, uh, not allowing his uh, body language or yeah. energy or behavior to be dictated by the emotional piece. Yeah. And, um, but the emotion is good because he cares, yes. right? And so, but he's learning how to channel that in a way that's productive for our team. That's where he's getting better. How about Samuel Williamson, another guy with, you just see immense potential, hadn't really consistently put it together. Is this a year for him? I got three well? copies of that book. Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> good. Yeah, 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 he's, he's got one he's too. Got one. And, and but, you know, but the thing about both of those guys, um, and I'm, I'm sometimes patient to a fault, but I'm yeah. particularly patient with guys who really care yes. and work at it. Yeah. I'm less patient with guys who talk about it, but they're not, they don't really walk the walk. And you're talking about two guys who are really willing to put in the time. Yeah. And sometimes they put in so much time, they care so much yeah. that they want everything to happen right away. Yeah. And uh, so both of those guys have really grown. And, and Sam is a, is, is a true worker. Yeah. He seems like an awesome kid, too. I mean, he's, he's played a lot of different roles and maybe not up to the level he expected to. How do you assess players like that, right? A kid who comes in highly touted, maybe doesn't, doesn't reach that level right away, still has a hunger, still puts the work into it. Like, how do you know how to serve them best? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, one of my faults is I love on them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I really do. I'm really patient. Uh, again, with guys that care. And I think uh, Sam's story is so unique. Yeah five-star player high expectations and the class that he came out with was yeah. really prolific yeah. I mean we come in his first year and Tyrese Maxey's working out every day in the gym before we get there he's running wind sprints for SMU but the, these these guys were uh contemporaries yeah. and most of his contemporaries are doing what he's dreamed yeah. of doing and being able to compartmentalize that and just stay true to your own journey. Yeah. And I think it's something that he's settled into. And we're going to see the best version of him this year. Yeah. Coach, what can we expect to see inside Moody Coliseum this year? Because that is one of the most exciting places yeah. to watch a basketball game. Yeah, it is going to be a lot of excitement because I, what I do believe is that, you know, our group is going to play so hard. You know, I've had people say to me, hey, you know what, one thing about your team that you continue to play hard, and I – I don't agree. I don't think we play quite hard enough to the standard that we need to reach. But I think you're going to see more of that. And I think our fans will respond to that. And, uh, and, and we're just going to be a more productive group. And, you know, I think we've got a, a community on campus that uh, and, and, and just in the Dallas area that loves SMU. They're excited and waiting for us to explode. And they're going to get a, a taste of it this year. So. What, what would you say that the SMU basketball community appreciates or supports the most kind of gets behind the most from an identity standpoint um you know what my, my real perspective on that is uh I, I think what they want is a level of excellence yeah and sometimes that excellence on the court not speaking to smu but in general in college athletics can come with a bit of a compromise yes and i think when you're at an institution that has the aura of an yes. smu yeah that you can find that excellence without compromise. Yes. And I I don't so I can't speak for them in that regard, but I do know they're going to appreciate it when they get to experience yeah. 
the way that we've trying to put it together. And so that's just a matter of time. And, but, you know, what I think is that what they're going to see is that that's the direction that it really is headed in. It's interesting because it's almost like that is a community that appreciates the layers of success too, right? The, the path, the pattern to success, not just the outcome. They, they like to see the process in yeah. there as well. I mean, obviously the elite level teams, you always, it's easy to get behind elite level teams, elite level players, but when you earn it, it, it feels like it's something else. Does this feel like the year for you to kind of come out of last year Get yourselves rolling with with a lot of new faces in the conference. I do. I, I feel like it's a great opportunity for us to make great strides. Yeah. You know, um, and you know, there, there's uh, there's so many good players out there that fit yeah. what SMU is all about, yeah. and that's the challenge I think for every coach is trying to find young people that really will uh, flourish yeah. in your style of play, your campus, your setting. Your, your city, your style of coaching, the way you communicate. Yeah. And uh, I think that's why I feel so good about our team yeah. because we feel like we've got a group that fits us. It's an awesome place, too. Yep. Coach, Amazing. we look forward to seeing your group tip off here in just a few short weeks. Thanks so much for the time. Best Thank of luck here this season. My pleasure. And now SMU's Bree Sorensen will join us with Zerk Phelps. Bree Sorensen, and today we're walking baseline to baseline with SMU point guard Zurich Phelps. Zurich, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Great. And how have practices been this off season? Practices have been good. Uh, you know, we got a few new guys, so you know, just building chemistry, you know, with those guys, and you know, just building the foundation for ourselves. Is you know what we've been focusing on this summer. Yeah. So just tell me, what have you been working on specifically? Um, you know, being more dominant on the defensive end. You know, um, last year, you know, we weren't that dominant, so you know, we just you know, trying to build a foundation on that side of the, of the floor. Like you said, a lot of new talent this season. So tell me a little bit about the talent that you guys are bringing in and what we can expect for this upcoming season. Yeah, yeah. We, um, you know, Chuck Harris, you know, Jaheim Hudson, Tariq, uh, Denver, and BJ, you know, those are all tremendous guys. You know, they, you know, came from good programs. They're good people. Um, and, you know, they bring a lot for this team. You know, Chuck, you know, he, was, he did a lot, you know, for Butler. And, you know, he's going to do a lot here, you know. Jaheim, you know, he's going to bring that grit. Tariq, the same. BJ and uh, Denver, the same as well. Last season in the American, what are a few goals for you guys? Um, you know, this is our last year, man. So, we, you know, we're trying to win it. Mm -hmm. We're trying to win it. And now I heard you guys went to Spain <laughs> over this summer, went 3-0 and undefeated yeah. there. Tell me about your experience. Man, I, we, we enjoy Spain. Yeah. We enjoy Spain. Um, you, know, we built a, you know, we built a lot of chemistry, you know, yeah. playing there, you know, winning those three games. And, um, you know, just enjoyed the experience out there, you know, going to, Madrid, Valencia, and Barcelona, you know, it was it was a great experience. What was your favorite part? Uh, probably the shopping in Barcelona. You yeah. buy some new clothes, new shoes? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You, for you sure. went all out. Yeah. I already know you went all out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Zurich, for, for sure. going baseline to baseline, and good luck this season. Thank you. That's how close we are right now. You made it over that quickly from Moody Coliseum over here, you know. DFW Airport, man, this is great. So I want to talk a little bit more in depth with you, Zurich, about the transition, because I think it's really difficult to actually, if you've ever actually done it, you were, you were asked to play out of position last season, right? You Scoring guard, combo guard, like to be on the wing, be out in space, getting downhill, and you just had to play more of the point, facilitator, distributor type role. Now you get guys like B.J. Edwards, like you said, Chuck Harris, true point guards, allows you to play off the ball a little bit more. Can you talk me through on the court what that actually means when you go from facilitator to off the ball? Um, you know, for me, it helps me a lot, but, you know, for the team, it helps me a lot as well. Um, you, know, you know, me scoring, you know, it helps me a lot. I think, you know, with Chuck and BJ coming, they uh, they find players for me, like, like me, Sam, uh, Tariq, Jalen. And, you know, those type of guys and, you know, them come in, you know, they just bring a extra level of energy for us. Yeah, it's pretty wild to hear you say that. You Finding place for you. And last year you averaged almost 20 a game and you had to find place for everybody right. else yeah. too. Now, the, the but your scoring is so unique and it would be so physical at the same time where you can come off screens and you get downhill and you're a great finisher. Who do you like studying? Is there anybody you studied professionally over the summer that you really enjoy watching you try to emulate? Yeah, the two uh, main players were Bradley Bill, Tyrese Halliburton. Um, you know, Tyrese Halliburton is a really good passer. And, you know, me and Coach, you know, we, last summer, we, um, you know, picked Tyrese Halliburton's brain, you know, because I had to run the one, you know, most of the time. And I think, you know, 
it kind of helped me a lot now, you know, just playing off the ball more. I still get to find those players. And then, you know, Bradley Bill was one of my favorite players growing up. So, you know, just emulating his game, you know, studying him, you know, it's helped me this this long way. Yeah, I don't know if anybody can come off a pin down better than Bradley Bill, nah, man. That's tough to get squared all. like that. But that's part of your game, too, coming that's off all. pin down. So <laughs> with some of the new guys, I mean, we just kind of heard about it and talked about it, too. You, uh, you had a new coach. I mean, last year, Coach Lanier was his first season. Second season, everything's ramped up, right? Dialed to 11. Can you give us a sense of what practice has been like orchestrating additional stuff that Coach Lanier wants to see, but also you got new guys, too? Right. Um, you know, it's kind of tough, you know, with getting these new guys, but um, Coach Lanier has done a great job, you know. I think us playing more in practice, you know, has helped us a lot because, you know, it reverts to, you know, an actual game. So I think, you know, just playing more and, you know, um, you know, getting comfortable with, you know, Coach Lanier's system, you know, has helped us a lot. So uh, B.J. Edwards, Chuck Harris, they're two point guards, but they're a little bit different in how they play. What, what are some of the differences in their games? B.J. is he's really good, and I don't think he knows how good he can be yet. Wow. Um, Chuck, he's, he's a monster. Um he can score, pass, he can do it all. I'm, you know, I think he can help us a lot, you know, um, on both ends of the floors. And, um, yeah. So we've got some new teams entering into the American Conference. I mean, what do we even, what do we have to tell them about Moody Magic and Moody Coliseum? And when that place is rocking, not much like it. Right. Um, it's going to be different. It's going to be very different. Um, I think, you know, year one, you know, we were trying to figure ourselves out. Um, but year two is going to be is going to be very different. Well, appreciate your time, Zurich, and hoping to see some more moody magic from you. Thanks. Back to you, Morgan. Thanks. So